so hi guys uh, we're back with uh, another part of this video so uh, last time we tried to uh, kind of uh, asynchronize this uh, script url calls from our function but now uh, we need to go for a infinite loop because uh, when like in a real case we usually go for infinite loops we don't know how many urls are to be fetched and we want to scrape them uh, repeatedly repeatedly uh, so we'll we'll do that now uh, let's uh, try to see uh, what we had last time we'll just run it i think i think dot pi yeah so see uh, it's just working as expected now we'll press a control c and we'll finish it now what we can do is that we can make it recursive so we don't have the for loop async looping uh, feature in python so what we can do is that we can um, so each loop can be simulated using a recursion call also and vice versa so when you have a recursion you can do it by loop and if you have a loop you can do it by a recursion also right so the first loop will uh, the first pass of the loop is like the first function call that is why the pass is one next time if i call another function that is async io dot ensure future okay it's not coming as autocomplete yeah it is come now so main we'll be calling urls again but this time pass plus one right because this is the next call now what is happening here let's let's see uh, okay we need to make a await here i'll tell you why await so async slip is just like a you know function it's not slipping okay it's just a function that is uh, spending some time okay if you if you print a slip here see uh, what will happen here is basically it won't slip for this much time right see you see even though it's slipping for four seconds it's printing so it's not okay how we uh, use sleep in asynchronous calls is like uh, await then sleep time now you will see the difference uh, so yeah now see one seconds two seconds four seconds five seconds just like this as expected right so it's actually sleeping now okay uh it's like this scrape url is uh, doing some task for one second the sixth one then three is uh, sleeping for two seconds like working for two seconds basically as i said we are implementing sleep just to simulate the real task okay now uh we'll do it we'll try to do it in a infinite loop now uh, see we can do something like this uh so async io dot ensure future main urls uh pass plus one okay let's try to do it see the problem with this one is that what happens uh like numerous uh, uh, like a lot of number of uh passes are being so uh, there's a huge recursion basically okay what is happening here is that this function is calling this one this uh, ensure future like recursively it's calling the main and that is also calling another main and it's going in a row okay if i pass uh, if i print this pass okay just like uh, this pass is kind of identity for the main uh, which pass it's running in the infinite loop pass okay now if i print it you'll see the difference uh, it's actually running very fast and for that uh, so the number of passes is quite huge right all of them are one seconds uh, so the easier tasks are running but uh, like the quicker tasks are, are running but the number of we want to have a control over the number of threads being created not threads actually coroutine right so we say we we want to have maximum number of coroutines that is equal to max coroutines 
is equal to say 10 for now now what you will have we have something called semaphores kind of locks so what they does is basically somewhat like this uh, we have semaphores let's say so sem is equal to async io dot semaphores max coroutines okay now we have we are uh, allowing 10 coroutines to run asynchronously uh, now we'll implement that here so each time we uh, call another another coroutine we call sim dot acquire uh, and we need to await for that right whenever we are trying to wait for something this is like trying to ask for permission to create another thread another coroutine and we are asking sim if we have available uh, available slots or not so we, we are waiting for that whether it's available or not when it's available this will pass right so that's why await sim.acquire and uh, now if we run this you'll see a difference here yeah this is the difference i'm talking about so what is happening here is that you will see the difference uh, if I put another print statement here so each time we are coming inside a pass or a new recursion will print some what like pass pass is entered okay now I forgot something we need to release the semaphore also that is semaphore dot release okay so see you can see the difference right uh, we can also have a print statement here that is if pass is finished or released let's say okay test dot so we'll print it to a file the output and then we'll try to analyze that what we had okay we'll, we'll let it run for a bit of time i think it's enough uh okay let's stop it let's see what we have here now see at most we have uh, zero this much of oh. okay i think we need to change this print statement because we haven't yet entered we haven't yet acquired the permission so after we acquire the permission we will be printing this okay so let's change it and again run this now just remember that we are allowing some 10 coroutines to work here uh, we can stop it here now yes well, let's see what we have here see at most we have 10 coroutines running now each of the coroutines are running here okay now uh, pass one is released that means the first coroutine has ended now we had 10 coroutines running uh, 10 main functions basically running here and one is one main function is finished so the next one can enter right that means the one had uh, like seven calls to make so you, you can see here for pass one basically uh, pass one right so we have a uh, yeah we have nine calls here that is pass one then pass one like them only 
and once they're finished right once they're finished all of them are finished okay uh, it means that okay we we can uh, stop the pass one is finished because all the scrape url tasks have finished right each of the scrape url, URL task so each of the main functions had a nine urls to run and here you see there are nine uh, pass one prints that means all of them are finished and after that only we have called that pass one is released right now this means that uh, we can uh, allow another task because main one is finished and main 11 can enter at most we can have 10 mains that's why then again you can see 2 is finished so 12 is running 7 is released 6 is released 8 is released so a lot of are getting released simultaneously and that's why we're having same number of enters new ent entries here and it goes just like this but because we have a lock here we are not going to have a outburst of number of uh, coroutines we can have a control over them so whenever next time you need something to do with coroutines and you are needing an infinite loop an infinite program that needs to run indefinitely you can use this we could also uh, extend this to multi-threading actually so what we could do is that we could uh, create a event loop here like uh, another event loop and those event loops would be running simultaneously so say event loop one is running in one thread and event loop two is running in another thread right so we could do that also but currently we are not doing that uh, we, we could extend it that's why I, I was saying in the first video that we can use multi-threading and uh, make these coroutines run simultaneously like two different event loops run simultaneously so it's a scalable solution these coroutines are that's it guys that's the last video uh, that was the last video of my uh, playlist of about uh, coroutines and async io in python uh, let's see if you guys have any questions in the comment section would really appreciate uh, thanks for being for being patient uh, throughout this uh, video L session uh, tutorial thanks